the Sharks headed north of the border on Saturday night to take on the Titans at CBU Super Stadium. Both sides entered this match, languishing outside the eight with just three wins apiece. It was the Sharks who prevailed in a tense affair thanks to a Chad Townsend field goal but it may have come at a cost for Cronulla with an injury to one of their key representative stars. Here are the five talking points from the Sharks' 10-9 victory, in a game that finished with the same number of field goals as it did tries, it's no surprise that defense was key on the Gold Coast. Usually, low-scoring games produce dour matches but this one was a grind for all the right reasons. Neither side was short of enterprising play with the Sharks and Titans launching attacking raids at will. What was most impressive, however, was the resolute defense that both teams exhibited. This match produced a whopping 770 tackles and neither side was willing to blink as they attempted to out-muscle and out-enthuse one another. It made for a fantastic spectacle and despite their only being three tries scored, it was an exciting match nonetheless. Both sides defended their line admirably over the 80 minutes, producing some crunching tackles and miraculous try savers. This was no better typified by Titans substitute Max Kings and his 73rd-minute effort to deny Kurt Capewell from scoring off a James Segayara bomb. Ultimately, it was all in vain but you can't deny the spirit that both sides showed, in greasy conditions on the Gold Coast, the most difficult task on Saturday night was holding on to the football. The Titans finished the first half with a completion rate of 69% which crippled their chance of taking any lead into halftime. Garth Brennan's halftime speech made an impression as the Titans came out of the sheds and improved markedly in the handling stakes. They held on to the ball and with that came points. A try from dummy half Mitch Rain and an Ash Taylor field goal gave life to the Gold Coast comeback. Ironically, it was a handling error that killed off the Titans and their chances in this match with Ryan James knocking on a Bryce Cartwright offload with the line in sight. Promising signs for Brennan and the Titans but they'll need to put together an 80-minute performance if they're to claim a win soon, Bryce Cartwright entered the Titans' run on side in place of the relegated Kane LG. In the past two weeks, the Titans had averaged a measly 13 points per game and coach Garth Brennan was banking on Cartwright to ignite what had been a spluttering Gold Coast attack. While the Titans' number 6 had moments of promise, it's fair to say he's yet to recapture his Penrith form. Cartwright again overplayed his hand, and lacked the composure to get the Titans over the line in this one. It was a vast contrast to the maturity of Sharks half Chad Townsend who had the foresight to take a field goal at the end of the first half and then calmly banked another with two minutes remaining. While Cartwright didn't deliver in this game, it's too early to call time on his stint as starting half. He's a player that thrives on confidence and will benefit from another week in the run on side. Coach Brennan clearly has the same opinion, hinting that he will look to start Cartwright once again next week when they face the Raiders, after a round where we have seen some bunker. Howlers, tonight's game did little to allay concerns that the new system has improved decision-making, go back to Thursday night and a possible Broncos four-pointer was sent upstairs as a no-try. One footage could not conclusively show that Brisbane hooker Cody Nikarima had planted the ball over the line, the bunker sided with original decision of no-try. The decision was most likely correct but the issue is consistency across the league. Tonight, an identical 50-50 was sent up as a try for Mitch Rain. Initial footage showed Rain held up short of the line before being dragged into the end goal. While there was no footage showing the ball had made it to the turf, the fact that it had gone up as a try meant the bunker had little option but to side with that decision. Two identical situations yet two different rulings, with referees having to signal their decision before taking any decision up to the bunker, the result of a try often relies on a pure guess. It's no fault of the referee and certainly no fault of the bunker. They are simply working within the guidelines they have been given, but it begs the questions, are these really the best guideline we have? Surely a return to the old system where any benefit of the doubt favors the attacking team is the only way to go. What was a hard-fought win for the Sharks was soured in the final minutes as fullback Josh Duggan limped off with what appeared to be a left ankle injury. The severity of that injury is unknown but signs from the man himself didn't look promising, an injury to Duggan is the last thing the Sharks needed. Having endured a horrid run losing Wade Graham, Paul Gallen and Luke Lewis in recent weeks, the absence of Duggan is an additional selection headache that Shane Flanagan wouldn't have wanted. Dunn had finally found his feet at Cronulla, looking dangerous in the number one jersey. Should he miss next week, his absence will be keenly felt not only at Clubland. Blues coach Brad Fittler will hope Duggan's injury is nothing serious as he looks to lock in his origin squad ahead of the June 6th opener. 
a nervous way to head for both sets of fans, what did you make of the Sharks' one-point win? Is it enough to suggest they're back on track for season 2018? Let us know in the comments below, want to share your opinion? Why not write for us? Previous post previous next post.